Hi, I'm James. Let's take a look at how to use the Page to PDF Converter plugin from Zero Code. Just before we jump into it, if you need any help building your app or product, feel free to reach out to our team by visiting our website at zerocode.com. We're the largest maker of plugins for Bubble, as well as the top gold tier Bubble agency. We have almost 10 years of experience and can help you build any web, mobile, or AI product, or even help automate your business. While you're there, make sure you check out zerocode.com slash plugins. This is the full list of all the plugins we make, and there's like over 700 of them. So there's something there to cover pretty much everything your app could possibly need to do. Uh, for example, you know, there's uh, Stripe Marketplace Express. This helps you accept credit card payments on your app. Uh, there's Mapbox Maps, and this gives all sorts of maps functionality. Uh, this one's really good for saving on Bubble's hosting costs. This is AWS File Uploader, so you can store your files on your own S3 bucket. Uh, there's Air Calendar. There's Air Chat and Messaging. There's so many more there, so definitely explore that and check that out. Okay, let's check out the plugin itself. So as the name suggests, this lets you specify the entire page, an element, a section, uh, any part of your app to be exported and downloaded by your user as a PDF file. So looking at the plugin page here, there's a few things to be aware of before we start. The first, there is a demo here right on the page where you can download a PDF of this page and just see what it looks like from a user's point of view. So try that out first. There's also the live demo here. Uh, which takes you to a pre-built bubble app that has all the functionality added in so you can experiment and try it out and um, see all the different types of things you can be downloading and, and turning into PDFs. Give you some good ideas of how it can be implemented into your app. There's also the demo editor here. Now this opens up sort of the back end of what we just looked at. So a uh, fully editable version of the bubble editor with the plugin installed so you can reverse engineer it and pull it apart and see how it works and see how it'll apply uh, to your use case. Lastly is the documentation link here. So this goes into a excellent amount of detail on everything you need to know about the plugin. You've got uh, actions that the plugin can run, every parameter you can control, more advanced functionality like saving the PDF externally in, in S3 buckets and Wasabi and how you can uh, set all of that up. So look through all of those uh, resources here and that'll give you a full overview of everything that this plugin can do. The last thing I want to mention on this page that'll really help you out is our intercom chat widget in the bottom right-hand corner here. If you have any questions about this plugin, questions before installing, questions while installing, send us a message here. We would love to help you out. But for now, let's build something together and get you started with this plugin. Okay, step one is going to be getting the plugin into your app. So from your Bubble app here, click on the uh, plugins tab here on the left-hand side and click add plugins in the top right. Here, search for page to PDF on Reverter. And you'll see this one appear here uh, by zero code. Now you'll have two options here for uh, getting the, the plugin. You have a once-off payment or you have a monthly payment. Now the monthly payment is the most risk-free way to try this out as you're charged on a pro rata basis. So if it's $9 a month, it'll be nine divided by 30 days in a month and you'll only pay for the days that you have the plugin active. So if you sign up, use it for one day and then cancel, you'll only pay for that $9 divided by 30 for that one day. Uh, really risk-free and great way to try these out. All right, click install and you'll uh, see it in your app. You'll have new actions, new elements on your canvas and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so let's build something together. Let's look at how we might use this in an actual real world app. So what I've got here in my bubble editor is an example privacy policy. And we might want to give our users um, the option to download this privacy policy as a PDF. Maybe they want to print it out uh, for their own references. So I've got uh, the privacy policy here and I've got a button here that says download PDF and then we have the text all underneath. So the first thing we want to do is in our left-hand column here with the elements and the, uh, the assets, we have an option here, convert to PDF. And all I need to do is drag this onto the canvas. Now, not much needs to happen with this. The element just needs to be on the page so that the workflows become available to us. There are two things we need to look at here though um, once this element is selected. So we have our options here. We can set a maximum file size in megabytes for the PDF if we want to put some restrictions on that. Uh, especially useful if it's a multi-page PDF or something that can get quite large. And an option to enable file uploads if we want to save this to, um, to a database of our own as well as enabling downloads for the user. So for now, I'll just press yes for that. But in this um, mini tutorial we're doing here, we won't be doing much with that. We'll mostly be focusing on the PDF being downloaded for the user. All right. Let's look at next steps. So once this element is on the page, most of the action, the fun stuff happens in our workflow tab. So we need a trigger to start this PDF being generated and, and downloaded. And in our, use, in, in our example, it's this button here, download PDF. 
So I'll click the button, I'll click add workflow, and here's our workflow. When download button is clicked, we want an action, and I'm going to search for PDF. And you'll see there's an option here to generate a PDF. Easy peasy, let's click that. Okay, and a bunch of options are here now uh, available to us. So the first thing we want to have a look at is, do we have the right element on the page? We only have one converter on our page, so that's already selected, nothing to worry about there. Now the convert target, if we leave it as the default, it'll turn the entire page into a PDF, which could be useful. But for our example, let's specify a single element. And once single element is selected, this gets targeted by the ID. So the ID is something we need to turn on in bubble settings if you haven't done so already. To do this, click on the settings uh, tab on the left here, the general tab and right down the bottom, oh, it's already there. Right down the bottom, uh, you'll see an option here under advanced options, expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. All you need to do is turn this on. Just click that checkbox and that'll let us assign IDs to things. Now what that means, if we go to our design tab, uh, and we select an element, I'll select content section here. Um, you'll see right down the bottom in the appearance tab, a new field called ID attribute. Uh, and that'll appear once you turn that ID setting on. And this means we can give the individual ID two different elements on our page, allowing workflows like this to target specific things. Um, so I will call this one PDF-content. And what this means is if we go back to our workflow, and we want to generate the PDF, right back to the top, we can put that in our ID, PDF-content. You can call this whatever you like. Um, there just needs to be something unique that you'll remember so that you can put it into this field and the workflow knows what you're wanting to turn into a PDF. Great. All right, there's a bunch of other stuff we could change here. So make sure you look through the documentation we mentioned earlier on in this video, because there is so much you can do here to customize this and make this work exactly the way it needs to work for your specific use case and your app. I'm not gonna change too many things here for our example. Let's have a quick look though. We've got some format settings. You can, you've got portrait, uh, A4 works well. Uh, we don't only really ignore any IDs uh, for this example. We want text to be left to right, cool, cool, cool. We can put some padding in. So I'll put, uh, I'll put 80 padding for all of this just so that the text I'm generating um, isn't squashed right up on the edge of the PDF uh, because the container that has the ID is right up against the, the edge there. And we can put some uh, custom header and footer elements in here as well if we're wanting to. Or we can specify the, the file name. Let's put privacy-policy so that the user knows what they've downloaded. And there's a lot you can do here with uploading to AWS and auto-saving and all sorts of fun things. So check the documentation for a lot more detail on customization around um, making this work for you with advanced features. But for now, for our use case, I think that might be it. We have a button. When the button's clicked, we want to generate a PDF. Uh, we want to download that one element. It's targeting that ID. Let's try it out. So I'll click preview. It'll refresh my page. And I will click download PDF. Wait a second here. There we go. The PDF is downloaded. Now, I don't actually think the downloading animation is showing on my screen recording. So I've opened the PDF here in my browser so we can see what it looks like. So this has worked quite nicely. We have all of our text spread over a few pages. We've got our padding that we specified in the plugin. Everything's looking quite nice, exactly how it should. All right, but there was that kind of three or four seconds of nothingness while it loaded. And that's not the best user experience uh, we want for our users. There's a moment of thinking, did that button work? Do I have to click it again? We need to put some feedback into this, uh, into this flow so that when the user clicks that button, they know something's loading and something's happening. And this will also let us explore some of the other uh, actions in our workflows that this plugin gives us. So let's go back to our editor. And what I've got here, in our button, I've got a few elements. So this is our download button. Uh, I've got the button contents, which is the icon and the label, download PDF. I've also got text loading. Now I've got that set to hidden um, for on-page load um, because you know we don't want it to be seen until uh, the button is clicked, until, until something's actually loading. So let's add an action to show that while something, uh, while the PDF is downloading. I'm going to go back to my uh, workflow tab here. Now when the download button is clicked, we're already generating a download in the PDF. Great. Let's put a few other things as well. Let's hide an element. I'm going to hide the button contents, which if you remember, you move this out of the way, button contents here 
is the icon and the label download PDF. Because once the PDF is downloading, that isn't really useful for us to show to our users anymore. So we'll hide that. And then we'll just show an element. We're going to show the text loading. So that should replace the label and the button and say that something is loading, something's happening. Let's try it out and see how that's working. Refresh the page. All right, I'll click download PDF. There we go, our button's changed to loading. That's great, something's happening. And the PDF downloads, nice. But the loading still stays. So let's figure out how to get that to disappear once the file has downloaded. To do that, still in our workflow tab, I'm going to create a new event here. Under elements, you'll see a few PDF specific things have appeared. We've got uh, once a PDF has finished uploading to AWS, uh, once there's a pre-signed URL, but this is the one we want here. A converter has finished doing its job, converting, downloading. So we'll click that. The PDF uh, element in question is the only one on our page. So we don't need to choose from a list here. We've only got the one, but if you had a few on your page, this is where you would specify which one this workflow applies to. Great. So once this has finished, we want to do a few things. We actually want to do the reverse of what's in this, uh, in this workflow, where we hide the button controls and show the loading. Now we want to hide the loading and show the button controls again. So let's do that. I'm going to hide an element. And we want to hide the text loading. And we want to show an element. And what we want to show is the button contents. All right, that should do it for us. Let's try it out. I'll click preview, we'll refresh our page. All right, I'm going to click download PDF. Changes to loading. We'll wait a second or two. It downloads. And our button's back to download PDF. Great. So we have uh, two workflows here. We have when the download button's clicked, we're generating a PDF, and we're hiding the button controls, and we're showing loading text. And then once the download is finished, uh, we're hiding the loading text, showing the button contents again. Um, and we have, yeah, a nice workflow for our users so that they can access what's on our page as a PDF. And we have some good feedback so they know what's happening in the app while something is downloading and loading. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to check out all the other plugins we make at zerocode.com slash plugins. And if you have any questions about any of this, send us a message. We would love to help you out. Happy building.